started the timer and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering a critical care scenario, kindly tell me how would you manage this patient now? I will uh, manage this patient according to uh, care of critical care and surgical inpatient yes. uh, protocol and go for ABC approach. Yes. I will first uh, 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 I will first stop all the IV fluids. Okay. And uh, then I will, um, after checking ABC uh, uh, um, and other uh, vitals, and then I will come in high flow oxygen. Uh, then I will give IV cosamide and okay. uh, GTN infusion if it's going to be more than 100 millimeter mercury. And then I will consult with IT register. And uh, then uh, I will go for investigations like request for test x ray and ABG and uh, yeah, serum electrolyte and uh, go for an ECG. And then if uh, needed, uh, ventilator support uh, can be given. Um, yes, in case, how would you, give, yes. Uh, how would you? I would give non-invasive uh, ventilation uh, yes. uh, by positive inexpiratory pressure, uh, yes. positive inexpiratory pressure, uh, CPAP. And, mm, uh, the medical management uh, that can be given here uh, to increase the preload, uh, to decrease the preload um, is crucemide. Uh, can you, I, I can you, okay, very good, yeah. thank you. Can you please tell me, how would you define, what is, what do you understand by the, pre, by the term preload? Uh, preload is the uh, volume um, uh, before uh, uh, before stage uh, of the uh, ventricle. Um, okay, we'll come back to that later. Can you please tell me what uh, inotropic support would you give to this patient and why? In this case, I can give um, uh, in, uh to increase uh, the force of contraction. Okay. Do no vitamin X on which type of uh, receptors? The vitamin beta. beta. Okay. Can you tell me uh, this patient was given uh, 7 liter of crystalloids plus colloids. Do you think uh, what is wrong with it? Still patient was having oligoyuria. So what was your my provisional patient, diagnosis? My provisional diagnosis here is pulmonary edema. Okay, why? Because patient was given seven liters of uh, fluid. Why do you think That's was good. it uh, enough? Or comment on it. Discuss, please. Was it sufficient or was uh, it not sufficient? How much should have been given? Ma'am, uh, uh, postoperative fluid should be. Uh, given according to uh, the patient's um, uh, body weight and um, also uh, uh, by after checking patient's uh, okay. vitals. And in, in this case, 7 liter is more than requirement. All right. This patient was also getting fusamide. Despite all these facts, the uh, patient was still oligouric. Can you please tell me how much should be the minimal urinic output? Or what is the normal uh, minimum, minimum? Yes. Minimum urinary 0.5 ml per kg per hour. Okay. So 
how do you define uh, it is oligouric? Uh, how much should it be? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Less than 0.5 mil per kg per hour. Uh, uh, in, in that case, I, I, I can say it's the oligouric. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, low urine output and fluid overload. What is the mechanism of physiology behind it? How does it lead to sequelae of events leading to congestive heart failure? Can you please take me to? As this is the post-operative uh, patient, yes, uh, they are making uh, physiological stress response. Yes, uh, due to the uh, uh, increased circulatory group corticoids and mineral corticoids that. Uh, when it persists for 24 to 36 hours, that causes yes. fluid, and water, uh, fluid and water retention. Yes. And uh, due to the uh, uh, surgical uh, trauma and yes. anesthetic gases, that will also cause uh, increased circulatory, uh, uh, increased uh, uh, circulatory vasopressin uh, from posterior uh, pituitary, and uh, that will uh, cause further. Uh, post-operative uh, solute free water retention okay. and if there is constant uh, cardiac failure development uh, that will cause renal hyperperfusion. This is how the it, by how it Okay, that is how it develops renal. Okay, but how does it affect heart muscles or the heart, heart itself? Muscles, uh, by, by increasing the uh, uh, pulmonary arterial pressure uh, it, increase, it increases uh, by increasing the preload. Uh, it affects the uh, cardiac uh, was the, But here uh, is increase the yes. cardiac workload. Okay. And yes. that may lead to MI. Yes, but then how is it working? You have to tell me. Like this is preload was raised. How does it affects afterload? What was the situation in afterload? Was it raised or was it decreased? Because of uh, fluid there, overload, left ventricular and diastolic volume was also high. That was also leading to interdigitalization of more actin and myosin of the cardiac muscles. And until to that point that there was no overlap, right? It was that much more. So that was uh, affecting uh, the stroke volume and it was affecting the cardiac output. I and that so. was leading to decreased renal perfusion and that was leading to decrease effect or uh, it was affecting the renal function. And that is also causing to post-operative fluid uh, being more pulmonary. Anyway, you'll read that. Okay, can you tell me what should be the normal daily requirement for sodium and potassium in the post-operative patient? For sodium, for sodium, one to two milligrams per kg and for potassium, 0.5 to one milligram per kg. Okay, uh, can you tell me uh, where would you manage this patient? I will manage this patient in the ICU. Her high dependency unit. Okay, can you tell me uh, how, what measures can you take to prevent this from happening? I will um, insert a CV line to yes. uh, monitor the venous pressure. Yes. And I will check the output. Uh, and I will report to the uh, hospital reporting uh, incident reporting system and uh, by better training to the good staff. Okay. Can be prevented. How frequently would you monitor urine output? I will monitor uh, urine output hourly. Okay. Uh, right. According to NICE guidelines, how should the CVP line be inserted? This line should be uh, inserted uh, according to uh, when, uh, I didn't understand the question. Uh, through the ultrasound uh, monitoring while you are ultrasound, uh, ultrasound guidance. Guidance, yes. Okay, can you before we end, can you help me read this X-ray or this image? Please. Uh, this is the chest, uh, chest X-ray preview. Yes. yes. 
showing uh, uh, showing inhomogeneous opacity involving both lung films. Uh, okay. The bony thorax is normal. Okay. And, uh, the car uh, cardiac shutter is enlarged. Um, there are uh, obliterated costophrenic and cardiophrenic angles okay. on both sides. Yes. And and there is no and gas shadow. The diaphragm. Yes. There is no gas shadow. Uh, both diaphragms um, are normal in position. And okay. there is no funding ga funding gas shadow beneath the left dome of diaphragm. Yes. And the trachea um, is central in position. And what are uh, the opacities or what does what are these infiltrations? Is the exposure of the extra enough? Would you comment on it? Uh, is it overly yeah, yes, the exposed? Exposure is, it, 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 the exposure is enough. Okay. What more can we comment on it? Are there any infiltrates? Can you see any opacities or any infiltrates or anything? What are there these? Are multiple. Uh, yes. What are these that you're looking there, at? Uh, this may be the ECG list. ECG, yes. And most probably this extra belongs to a male patient. Yes, there yes. is no best shadow. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you.